America's most popular podcaster, Joe Rogan, is taking heat today. Joe Rogan went on to Instagram for about a 10 minute social video. He was addressing allegations. Joe Rogan, you love him, you hate him, you, you gotta live with him as he's got the largest podcast in the world. News networks and celebrities eager for their own spotlight have tried to tear him down and cancel him. In this video, we will unravel the allegations against him, analyze the supporting evidence, and unmask his true identity. By the end, you'll understand exactly why Joe Rogan remains uncancelable. Whenever anybody screws up in the media, you, you, you just get these people that they want a target. It's a game, and the game is take someone down. The game is call someone out, take someone down, shame them. After an eight-year period of stable growth and ever-increasing popularity with the podcast, four major cancellation attempts came Joe's way in quick succession. Drop a like and let's get straight into it. Joe got hit with his first accusations after he brought Jordan Peterson onto the podcast. But when it gets to like Zer and Z, and the 78 different gender pronouns, it seems to a person outside of it, a person who's cisgendered, it seems pretty, pretty bizarre. This raised some eyebrows in the LGBT community. However, he managed to avoid direct criticism, so he voiced his opinions on the subject once again. You're letting people be crazy. Correct. Look, when you're letting a six foot four man compete in women's weightlifting mm. because he's decided that he's a woman now, mm. And, and now he, he's winning and he's wearing makeup and he looks like a gorilla and he's on stage lifting his arms up. Yay, yeah. diversity. Yeah. Like you're, you're stealing from women. You're stealing. This time, Joe made it into a Fox News article, but escaped most of the widespread criticism, but still faced from some smaller creators. You know, the number one issue, one of the, one of the unchangeable uh, issues that Joe Rogan won't budge on is other than like, you know, legalization of marijuana or whatever, is uh, trans athletes. And yeah. I feel like it's really just... I think it has had a lasting impact on the way that people cover the oh, story. Yeah. It's a very, it's like a super uh, adequate, super powerful way to traffic transphobic uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. Hassan Abi tried to capitalize on this opportunity as he attempted to speak out against Joe. This plan ultimately failed and the top comments on the video were Joe's fans defending him and criticizing Hassan for trying to cancel Joe. The betrayal of Adam ruins everything after being on his podcast and now speaking badly of Joe was also picked up by his fans. Joe did not stop his discussions on the topic after this. He instead carried on taking it one step further by inviting the author of Irreversible Damage the transgender craze seducing our daughters. Abigail Schreer published this book in 2020, and in the heat of the controversy, she appeared on Joe Rogan's podcast, explaining her findings whilst writing. Doctors just handing over the prescription pad, and we're seeing that right now with anybody who claims to have gender dysphoria. They get it, they, they self-diagnose, they say, no, 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 I know it's my problem. They don't have a mental health professional who says, oh, wait a second, hold on, you have very high anxiety, depression, you have a lot of other mental health stuff going on, Let's deal with that first. Any therapist who dares to say that might violate one of the 19 conversion therapy laws we now have in 19 different states. Many political commentators such as Candace Owens and Tucker Carlson also promoted her and praised her writings. However, there was a massive pushback from the trans community. I don't like the framing of this entire interview. He's invited her onto his podcast to educate him. Like he's he's asking her questions as if she's a teacher. And I know she chats like she knows it all, but she really doesn't. It's just the fact that millions of people are gonna watch this and be like, oh, well I heard on Joe Rogan that women are taking testosterone to cure puberty. For example, this brain dead subhuman turf named Abigail Schreier. Joe Rogan does not know how to responsibly platform and argue against the beliefs of the people he brings on his show, generally speaking. Later, when Jordan Peterson returned to the podcast in 2022, even more transphobia accusations against Joe started flying in. You, I'm sure you're familiar with Douglas Murray's work. Yes, yeah, and of, Murray, who's yeah. very funny, who I like very much, and who's one of the most courageous people I've ever met. Yeah, he's brilliant. And he had uh, an amazing point about civilizations collapsing and that when they start collapsing they become obsessed with gender this time cnn took a swing at joe's podcast trying to attack and defame dr peterson not for the first time the joe rogan experience featured contentious canadian psychologist and author jordan peterson this time for over four hours in a free-ranging, reductive back and forth about topics Peterson has no expertise in. 
women. Climate, race, the transgender community. So you think that a lot of what's going on with people that want to change their gender identity is creativity? No, I don't think so. So what do you... I know so. This misinformation on climate. There's no such thing as climate, right? Climate and everything are the same word. Yeah. And this one on race. Sorry. I am white. Actually, that's a lie, too. <laughs> I'm kind of tan. And he was actually not black. If you're tan, he was sort of brown. Am I? To no surprise, this did not stop Joe, and he brought on Dr. Peterson less than a year later to discuss the same topics, but this time at a deeper level. The satanic daycare ritual abuse accusations that came out in the 1980s. That was a psychological epidemic. And the, the rule basically is, is that if you, if you confuse people about a fundamental element of their identity, then those who are already so confused they're barely hanging on are going to fall prey to that and all hell's going to break loose. And that's exactly what's happened in the, you know, in the trans, in the trans situation. But the it's difference between unequal. this one as opposed to the other ones like multiple personality disorder is that this one is being reinforced culturally. Like you, you are rewarded. Joe knew what was coming straight away. It's so this crazy that much. this, what you're saying here, although it's backed by the literature, it's it's obvious you have an expertise in this area, that this is this is labeled as transphobic. Yeah, this is yeah. a transphobic Well, it's even worse than that, you know, because... And if the comments so far from Joe and Dr. Peterson weren't bad enough, then their next comments would serve as the icing on the cake for anyone trying to cancel Joe. So the joint probability that you have a trans kid and a pansexual kid is one in nine million. The odds that you're a pathological narcissist sacrificing your own children to the glorification of your compassion is 8,999,999 to one. So like, do you have a trans kid and a pansexual kid? Or are you a devouring mother? Well, you can look at the odds and decide for yourself. The articles came flying in from the New York Post, The Independent, and many other smaller journals. A larger channel did, however, follow up on these accusations and critique Joe's views. And also, is this the same friend that told you that there were litter, litter boxes, boxes in schools and that kids were identifying as cats? He always has a friend that's telling him some right-wing misinformation that's so easily disproven. Well, yeah. That way, like, he can't ever be blamed for misinforming yep. people. He's the one who's been misinformed, and he's just communicating information. Information. That's like the whole plot of this of his uh, podcast, where it's like I'm not misinforming you. I'm just platforming people and giving them the opportunity to misinform you, and I'm just being misinformed alongside you. Despite the efforts from the media and individuals, these attempts ultimately failed. The majority of their arguments against Joe were weak, and his fans dominated the comment sections, fiercely defending Joe against anyone who dared to criticize him. The loyal following he built over the last 15 years was showing their loyalty and beginning to pay off. At RealGoodDotty9395 summed it up best, indeed he is correct, it seems as if they were using his name for attention to get some extra views. They simply dislike him as a person, and they tried to cancel him many times. The Majority Report channel has since posted many videos insulting Joe by using titles such as Joe Rogan is the real mind virus and Joe Rogan is Hamas now. Also, the likes of Fox News and the Advocate Channel spoke on the topic. Fox News only repeated Joe's statement, not showing any bias for or against him, possibly because they have hosted people who agree with Joe on the topic. On the other hand, many smaller LGBT platforms, such as the Advocate Channel, with only 1,000 followers on Instagram, and an average of 100 views per video on YouTube tried to take it to the next step. However, ultimately these attempts to cancel Joe failed with the articles and videos failing due to their lack of popularity and Joe's army of supporters willing to fight in any video's comment section. These cancellation attempts didn't bother Joe and he still speaks freely on the trans topic with the same guests as before. Was there ever, did anyone <laughs> have a therapist who said, you know what? I don't think the trans identity fits you. It's a psychological disorder, just like gender dysphoria. It's a psychological disorder. It's always been listed as a psychological disorder. And now in 2024, everyone who is a man who thinks he's a woman is brave and amazing. No one's sick. So you're allowing people that are absolutely perverts and sex offenders to go into women's locker rooms with a heart on and no one can say anything. And if you say something, they will protest your business and shut you down. Throughout this controversy, despite the criticism faced, there was one thing Joe would not budge on. To this insanity of biological men with gender dysphoria 
trying to compete with women. This shows the resilience of the Joe Rogan brand that has been built up over the last 15 years and it reinforces his unique ability to not be cancelled. Throughout Joe's career, he has made several controversial statements and his trans comments weren't the only ones that captured public attention and caused a massive outrage. These next comments nearly caused Joe's whole operation to be permanently shut down. Fortunately for him, he had some powerful forces working in his favor. But if you're like 21 years old and you say to me, should I get vaccinated? I, I go, no. Yeah. You, are you healthy? Are you a healthy person? Like, look, don't do anything stupid, but you should take care of yourself. You yeah. should, if you're, if you're a healthy person and you're exercising all the time and you're young and you're eating well, and like, I don't think you need to worry about this. This caused a huge media outrage, and all mainstream channels and creators started to post videos stating how factually incorrect Joe was and how he should be stopped. An army of doctors were summoned to argue against Joe's comments. Hundreds of doctors have written an open letter to Spotify about their most popular podcast host, Joe Rogan. They say they are fed up with the misinformation Rogan has been spreading about the pandemic. Joe Rogan hosts the most popular podcast in the world. But now the comedian is being called out by 270 medical experts. When you have misinformation on a platform like that going unchecked, it just, it creates a sense of false balance, like there's two sides to this issue when really they are not. And the overwhelming evidence shows that the vaccines are effective and that they are safe. The chief medical advisor to the president of the United States at the time would later join in. Well, that's incorrect, Savannah. And the reason why is that you're talking about yourself in a vacuum then. You're worried about yourself getting infected and likelihood that you're not gonna get any symptoms. But you can get infected and will get infected if you put yourself at risk. And even if you don't have any symptoms, you are propagating the outbreak because it is likely that you, even if you have no symptoms, that you may inadvertently and innocently then infect someone else who might infect someone who really could have a problem with a severe outcome. Yeah. Joe and Dave also commented on how the government would use the vaccines for their benefit. I couldn't send a wow. direct message. It's, it was, I was asking him if this was accurate. And it was a doctor who's talking about ivermectin. And ivermectin, which is a, um, it's a treatment for COVID. And this doctor was saying that ivermectin is 99% effective in treating COVID, but that you don't hear about it because you can't fund vaccines when there's an effective treatment. Hmm. And this is, I don't know if this guy's right or wrong. So I'm asking questions. So I go, hey, tell me about this. So I send it. It message not sent. I tried to send it again. Message not sent. I'm like, oh my God, what's your email? The discussion got really deep and had them questioning the whole thing. No sense of like, you have a right to do this. Or you have a right to not do that. And come on, you think they're going to take that power and then this will only ever be used for the COVID vaccine? Why well, would also, it be? Logically, it doesn't seem to make sense. If the vaccine is available to everybody who wants it and everybody who wants it gets vaccinated, who are we protecting? The criticism they faced was substantial. And it got so bad at one stage, the president had to address the situation. They're killing people. I mean, it really, they really, look, the only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated. And, that, and, they're, and they're killing people. Joe realized this, and like a true professional, he did admit some of his errors. The White House commented on what I said about <laughs> vaccines. <laughs> it's so funny. Fauci hit you up. Well, he didn't hit me up necessarily. He disagreed with me. I'm not, I'm not an anti-vax person. Right. In fact, I said, I believe they're safe and I encourage many people to take them. My parents were vaccinated. I just said, I don't think that if you're a young, healthy person that you need it. Their argument was you need it for other people. So you don't transmit the virus. That makes more sense. So I'm that's, a young- But that's a different argument. Joe handled this wave of criticism quite professionally and he started to do more research and slightly adjusted his tone. The tide then shifted when he went to extreme lengths to bring highly qualified doctors onto his podcast. They removed you for not going along with whatever the tech narrative is, because tech clearly has uh, a censorship agenda when it comes to COVID, in terms of treatment, in terms of the, the wh whether or not you are promoting what they would call vaccine hesitancy, they can ban you for that. It's one of my core points is people should think for themselves. I try really hard to give people the information 
and help them to think, not to tell them what to think. Despite the legitimacy of this plan from Joe, it backfired, and it got so severe that at one stage his Spotify deal came under threat. Neil Young demanding his music be scrubbed from Spotify in a since-deleted letter reported by Rolling Stone magazine. I am doing this because Spotify is spreading fake information about vaccines, Young wrote in a post NBC News has not viewed. The Harvest Moon singer reportedly putting forth an ultimatum. They can have Rogan or Young, not both. After this hashtag, Delete Spotify began trending. Neil Young's bold statement forced Spotify into a hard decision. Other musicians such as David Crosby, a former bandmate of Young's, said he would also remove his music from the service. This caused Spotify to take massive action because it started to affect their profitability, which we all know is their main focus. They had to be cautious in how they handled this because the public was watching and demanding action to be taken. Howard Stern, who has his own controversial show on Sirius XM, argued that Spotify removing Rogan would indicate censorship, even though he doesn't agree with Rogan's views. Spotify released a statement on January 30th, saying it would be making some changes to its policies surrounding content discussing COVID-19. It said it will not allow content that promotes dangerous, false, or dangerous, deceptive medical information that may cause offline harm or possesses a direct threat to public health. This all went away once Spotify introduced their clear guidelines as the public demanded. Support finally arrived for Joe from Patrick Bet David, a good friend of his that ended up doing research to find evidence on claims against Joe. More than 270 doctors describing Rogan as a, by the way, this is a post-millennial story, describing Rogan as a menace to public health was sent to Spotify during uh, urgent company censor, the podcast star. It's uh, since been revealed, though, that a large portion of those doctors are not practice, practice in medical doctors. Over 50 were PhD academics, 60 were college professors, 29 <laughs> were nurses, 10 were students, former medical residents, and a handful of science podcasters were included in the signatures. This definitely helped Joe's case as this gave his fans that had been defending him the whole way through a leg to stand on and a reassured confidence in their favorite podcast host. But in true Joe Rogan fashion, he had one more thing to say. And it turns out I got COVID. We immediately threw the kitchen sink at it. All kinds of meds, monoclonal antibodies, uh, ivermectin, z -Pak. Uh, uh, prednisone. This caused a huge uproar and many critics lined up to take swings at him once again. But in the past, he has downplayed the vaccine. And in this case, he seems to have admitted he has COVID because it's hurting him in the pocketbook. He had to can't, he had to postpone or reschedule one of his upcoming stage shows. So you'd think the economic consequences might get people's attention and make people think, make, make his fans think differently about the threat of COVID. CNN were crafty with their criticism of Joe. If you pay attention carefully, you will spot it. Look at their clip of Joe's statement. Turns out I got COVID. So we immediately threw the kitchen sink at it. All kinds of meds, monoclonal antibodies, uh, ivermectin. And when you look at his video normally. We immediately threw the kitchen sink at it. All kinds of meds, monoclonal antibodies, uh, ivermectin. Well, if you spotted it, well done. If not, listen to how Joe caught this excellently using one of CNN's own against them. I can afford people medicine, motherfucker. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's just a lie. I don't think anyone is thick. But don't you think that a lie like that is dangerous on a news network when you know that they know they're lying? Joe finally caught CNN with their pants down. And he was not letting this go lightly after all the scrutiny they put him under. Does it bother you that the news network you work for out and out lied, well, just outright lied about me taking horse dewormer. They, they, they shouldn't have said that. Why did they do that? I don't know. Then Joe delivered the final blow to CNN's chief medical correspondent. Turns out I got COVID. Look, they put a so yellow filter on me too. The kitchen sink at it. All kinds <laughs> they did. Of meds, monoclonal you see the antibodies, original video versus uh, that? I look like shit there. Joe finally canceled the cancelers, and this was a major win for him all his fans, and any rival of CNN. Add CNN to the list of things Joe Rogan now owns. I speak of CNN's chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who admitted to Joe Rogan that it was wrong for the network, including Don Lemon and Jim Acosta, to claim Rogan took horse dewormer as a COVID treatment. A well-known right-wing political commentator also spoke out against the cancellation attempts on Joe. Joe Rogan has now kicked into high gear after a bunch of has-been 1960s rockers decided that they would tell Spotify to remove their music or get rid of Joe Rogan. Specifically, they say they are angry at Joe Rogan for purveying what they called COVID misinformation, which, again, this is just an excuse to get rid of Rogan. It really is. 
It is not a coincidence that all of this started to snowball after Jordan Peterson's latest interview with Rogan, in which Jordan Peterson was talking about everything ranging from race to climate change, like a four-hour conversation. And people on the left hate Jordan Peterson, and they hate the fact that Joe Rogan talks to people like Jordan Peterson. Ultimately, support from Spotify, his loyal listeners, Patrick Bet David, Ben Shapiro, Fox News, and many others allowed Joe Rogan to maintain his firm stance on vaccines without being canceled. If his podcast wasn't the biggest in the world at the time of this controversy, it definitely was after. His ability to provoke responses from the president and chief medical advisor and subsequently rise above them showcased Joe's resilience to being canceled. Even to this day, he continues to critique the vaccine, despite many efforts made to censor him. How many people were promoters of the vaccine and then died suddenly? It's crazy how many young people just died in their sleep after they took it. And everybody's like, nothing to see here. Sudden adult death syndrome. Yeah, just died suddenly. You ever go to the died suddenly Instagram page? Like, holy oh God. Joe managed to escape these widespread cancellation attempts during the pandemic due to the sheer scale of his podcast. It's why Spotify chose him over Neil Young and the social media pages were afraid to take him down. In the end, when the people who disagreed with Joe realized he couldn't be canceled and they humbled themselves and called for guidance to be put out instead. We are not, again, asking for the censorship or removal or even deplatforming of a person or a podcast. We're asking for responsible actions to make sure that consumers of that information are properly warned. Even the 54-year-old's own battle with COVID stirring up controversy. Turns out I got COVID. So we immediately threw the kitchen sink at him. Revealing he took ivermectin, which the FDA has approved to treat parasitic worms in humans, but not COVID-19. Most people weren't as fortunate as Joe and their audiences were not big enough to protect them from cancellation. And many creators haven't been seen online since the pandemic. We will now move on to what may be the worst attempts of them all from an anonymous culprit. Trans comments and skepticism around the COVID vaccine aren't the only thing Joe has come close to cancellation for. During February 2022, a video surfaced that would change the Joe Rogan Experience podcast forever. He's calling you a It's like this boy that he's a and starts calling them With this coming out after the height of the Black Lives Matter protest, it caused a massive outrage amongst the African-American community. So they take this money that's built from streaming and they pay this guy $100 million, but they pay us 0.003% of a penny? Just take me off. I don't want to generate money that pays this. There's a video that's out that's a compilation of me saying the N-word. It's a video that's made of clips taken out of context of me of 12 years of conversations on my podcast and it's all smushed together and it looks fucking horrible, even to me. And I was trying to make the story entertaining and I said, we got out and it was like we were in Africa. It's like we were in Planet of the Apes. I did not, nor would I ever say that black people are apes, but it sure fucking sounded like that. And I immediately afterwards said, that's a racist thing to say. I deleted that whole podcast, but obviously somebody made a clip out of it and taken out of context. It looks terrible, but it looks terrible even in context. It's a fucking idiotic thing to say. After this apology, the support from Joe's friends really came flying in, and it managed to shift the minds of many people. There's a lot of snakes in this game. I've been in this fight game since 2008, and Joe Rogan is one of the nicest, coolest, humble motherfuckers I've had the pleasure of working with. Understand that. And you know, it's just, fuck the noise, man. You know what they're trying to do. You can't control the man, and he's got the biggest platform in the world right now. So that's my name, Joe Rogan. Fuck the noise. You know, if you say that and people are offended, they have a right to be offended. And if you didn't mean to offend them, you can apologize. And he did apologize. I accept his apology. Joe's OK with me as far as that goes. Joe's podcast's long track record combined with support from his friends in the UFC and the black community ensured that his professional apology kept him from being canceled. After these controversial moments for Joe, he managed to get caught up in another controversy. This time, it enraged many people from the Middle East. You know, the, the idea that Jewish people are not into money is ridiculous. Listen. That's like saying uh, Italians aren't into pizza. Ooh. It's fucking I mean, stupid. Listen. Joe was referencing comments made by Ilhan Omar in 2019 that nearly got her canceled. Omar suggested American supporters of Israel are pushing people to have a, quote, allegiance to a foreign country. Which the 45th U.S. president mentioned while hosting a rally. And a special thanks to Representative 
Omar of Minnesota. Oh. Oh. Oh, I forgot. She doesn't like Israel, I forgot. Joe's guest was also in agreement. It's I, fucking stupid. I understand that the way she phrased it, like she could have phrased it a different way so that people would have less of a freak out, but can you not talk about the influence of money in DC? Of course. When, I mean, this is very obvious. There's a very obvious reason why for my entire life, there's been a uniparty consensus around our policy vis-a-vis -vis the Israeli government and a total inability or unwillingness to criticize the Israeli government. It has everything to do with organization and, yes, money. Those who have tried to cancel Joe before saw this as another opportunity to bring him down. He's in criticism after he pushed the anti-Semitic trope that Jewish people are, quote, into money. People are outraged, but at this point, people are, are kind of getting used to this being a pattern with Joe Rogan. This isn't the first time that he's defended people who've made anti-Semitic remarks. Obviously, he's now coming out and making them. Having previously attacked Joe without success, this time they chose to target his guardian instead. Ultimately, obviously, they'll say that they care a lot about safety. But remember, they're a Swedish company. So they think about these things and how they play out in the U.S. a little bit differently. The one thing that distinguishes Spotify and Daniel from other tech CEOs is they take their time. You're not going to see some sort of rushed policy implemented today. They'll probably come out and condemn these remarks. Maybe they'll throw a misinformation label and then presumably everything will just move on. I'm not saying that that's what it should be, but that's what's happened in the past with Joe Rogan. CNN were the only major channel to condemn Joe for every controversy. They've had a constant agenda against Joe and have been persistent as the only mainstream channel consistently trying to cancel him, even for the smallest statements. Another one of Joe's favorite critics also had something to say. He is espousing a anti-Semitic trope in defense of somebody, like also imparting onto her an anti-Semitic yes. trope, which she did not say. Yes. Um, and the fact that he conflates that, that's the reason why Crystal should have spoken up because everything she's talking about in defense of Ilhan Omar is in some ways flushed down the toilet because uh, Rogan's predicate is Jews are into money. Yeah. What she said was not that big of a deal because Jews are into money. In fact, they love money. In However, a good friend of Joe that is Jewish with a massive audience himself actually came out defending Joe's comments. She's everybody likes money and Jews are good with it. And, you know, again, that is a very different thing than, than I think how it came out on the air when Joe was talking about it. I will say that there is a difference between making stereotypical comments and having a stereotypical worldview. When you talk about full damaging racism or anti-Semitism, it is actions that are tied to a full-scale worldview that are truly damaging. Now, there can be prominent people who say things that then tie into that worldview or give credence to that worldview unintentionally by saying things. And that's a problem. But the bigger problem is the worldview itself. If somebody makes a Jewish joke, is that the same thing as somebody buying into a broad-scale program with regard to Jewish conspiracy theory? Joe's good friend Patrick Bet David also spoke on the comments made by Joe. Oh, everybody's going to go somewhere. So this concept about we have to be robots and, you know, get everything to be perfectly in place. I'm sorry. I have a hard time with that. Joe's a comedian. OK, and if you don't like Joe when he's talking the way he does and say this is like the same thing with the pizza and all this other stuff, I'm not forgiving on his behalf and I'm not defending him. All I'm saying is we kind of have to grow up a little bit and not act like, hey, you can't say that about my community, yet you do it yourself all the time. So if you want to be forgiven when it's on you, you have to forgive, keep forgiven, uh, move on. I, I have a very hard time with this. It turns out it was mainly CNN that wanted to cancel Joe. And crazily enough, Joe seems to have a bigger and more loyal audience than CNN. So he was ultimately uncancelable. Interestingly enough, CNN is owned by the Warner Bros who also owns Disney. Russell Brandt, the former British comic and now full-time conspiracy theorist, also noticed the constant criticism from CNN. Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan, CNN are saying that Joe Rogan is the reason that we have all this misinformation and even the reason that we don't trust mainstream media. But could another version of the truth be that while Joe Rogan is sort of doing a podcast, the mainstream media is slyly pushing us towards war? And since Joe worked for them, and openly criticized them. This may explain their agenda to cancel him. And after all this was said and done, Joe took the time to reflect on nearly being canceled with Lex Friedman. How did you sort of uh, 
walk through that fire because you seem to do it with grace. I used mushrooms. <laughs> that was one way I did it. Yeah, yeah. Really? In a much more serious way, he followed this up by saying, the, the great benefit is it gives you an opportunity to grow, it gives you an opportunity to express yourself under pressure, to, to show your character, to show who you truly are. And uh, it gives you an opportunity to see how you handle a very difficult situation. The truth is Joe did handle these cancellation attempts very well, as he used all of the publicity to his advantage, like the true celebrity he once was and will always be. Yeah. But what I got to see is the wiring under the machine of how the rest of media would try to take me out. Like when CNN would be just be playing things over and over and back and forth. It was wild to watch. What was also wild to watch was people's responses uh, because I gained 2 million subscribers during that time. Like the podcast never got bigger. Joe is correct. His podcast grew drastically after all the controversy he caused. Some may even argue Joe knew what he was doing and that he was using the lessons he learned from Hollywood. Listen, there is no such thing as bad publicity. Train by day, Joe Rogan podcast by night. Despite the numerous attempts to silence him, Joe Rogan remains uncancelable and his audience continues to grow. But let us know what you think protected him and if he should have faced cancellation for his remarks in the comment section below. Thanks to Joe's immense loyal and war-ready fans, Spotify, his powerful friends, and the scale of his podcast, he remains uncancelable. During all of these controversies, Joe displayed exceptional professionalism and a unique, humble ability to admit where he was wrong and apologize when necessary. Joe continues to get millions and millions of views only hours after posting his podcasts. Even with Joe's resilience and fan base, one company did manage to censor him and seize control of his podcast. We've explored these events in depth in this video. Click here to watch and uncover the full story.